Hi, everyone. Welcome. Give everyone some time to pop in. <clears throat> Look at everyone being so prompt. I love it. Afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone, depending on where you're logging in from. I'm gonna give everyone a few minutes to get logged in. Good morning, everybody. Trevor, I love that you have your hoodie on. That makes me happy. <laughs> it's World Cup. Sorry, I'm just awkwardly sitting here. I don't want to start talking until everyone's here. It always feels so strange. <laughs> I have my Team Canada shirt on, so for anyone that's wondering, this is what they look like. You don't have yours in person. A little bit of Team Canada on the back. I'll add it, add it to my collection. Pretty exciting. Let's get the World Cup officially started. I've been getting messages from friends um, across uh, around the world with uh, judging and uh, seeing all the team videos. The fun part of, um, of everything being online is anyone's allowed to participate, which is great. Well, I want to make sure we have time for the really exciting panel that's coming after me. I'm definitely not the star of the show. So I'm going to get started uh, with uh, today and just start off by saying welcome. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Nicole Amon. I'm the president of Enactus Canada. Um, and uh, the World Cup is my favorite three days of the year. This would have been, I think, my 14th event um, or is my 14th event because I'm still there, which is great. And I know that we're all not all there in person. But the amazing thing about this being online this year is it means that as many people as possible can participate. We have over, I checked this morning on the back end, there were 6,100 people registered uh, to be part um, of the World Cup from around the world. Um, and obviously, as always, a great contingent from Canada. We have almost 500 student, business, academic um, participants from our country representing well. Um, so I always like to shoot above our weight. So with, uh, you know, 500 of 6,200 people being Canadian, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, and we'll be really well represented. And we know we'll be incredibly well represented um, by our team from Laurier, who's going to be representing us over the course of the next week. Um, so first of all, thank you for being a part of it and thank you for leaning in. Uh, the global network is such a cool part of what Enactus is all about. The people you get to meet, the students you get to meet, 
And this network of like-minded people who all believe that business can be a powerful force for change um, and that with our actions and through collaboration and innovation, we really can make a difference when it comes to building a more sustainable world for us all. And that really, at the end of the day, is what Enactus is all about. And the World Cup is the epitome of bringing that all together. So that is what the next week is about. And today is about kicking that off and helping to kind of launch your World Cup experience. So first of all, I wanna say a huge thank you to the John Dobson Foundation who funds this program um, and makes this part of the event possible. We started the John Dobson Accelerator Training uh, over almost 15 years ago now um, in a way to encourage students to participate at the event and get the most out of their World Cup experience. And it started off, we actually had to pay for students to go to the event, um, but it's grown in to a driver of us having one of the largest participations of any country at the event, which is pretty cool. Um, so a huge thank you to the Dobson Foundation um, and a huge thank you to all of you for being part of the event today. Um, this is the World Cup and it's day one and it is a three day event. And I thought what I'd start off by doing is giving all of you kind of an overview of what the event looks like and what's happening. So although we're not in a convention center, there is still a home for the event. So I assume everyone here has registered. If you haven't, uh, you're gonna wanna go to enactus.org forward slash World Cup um, and make sure you're registered for the event. Um, and then you will end up, I'm just going to share the screen here, um, at kind of the home for the World Cup for the next few days. So if you've already registered, you don't need to see that. There's an updates tab here, which is going to give you um, some, some updates as things are happening. Um, and then there's the agenda which is a lot of events. I think if you don't filter them, um, it's in the neighborhood of, I think there's 70 sessions or something like that. So I would recommend going through and with these little stars, you can turn on or off adding something to your interests and that'll give you your agenda for the week. And this Bizabo homepage is how you're going to get to every part of the event. It's gonna be your launch pad to any different pieces. I mean, obviously you guys all have Zoom downloaded on your computer or have access to Zoom because some sessions will happen there, but you'll be linked to them through Zoom. So I just wanted to point out a few things you probably wanna check out. Um, starting tomorrow, there's a social ambassador student welcome. So all students um, are welcome to be part of that social ambassador session. Um, they aren't selecting them this year. Everyone can be a social ambassador if you want. And then a session from LinkedIn um, talking about how to build your brand. For any faculty that are logged on right now, there are some academic leader symposiums and Dr. Myra, who is one of our faculty advisors, is gonna be hosting um, the uh, academic leader symposium. So they'd be a great thing to check out. And then of course the opening ceremony. And at this year's opening ceremony, differently from past, is actually where they will, they will be announcing um, the top uh, 16 teams. So the semifinalists will be announced tomorrow afternoon. Um, you'll also notice that the agenda changes to your local time, because if you're like me, um, I really struggle with time zones. So this very conveniently changes it to the time zone that your computer's in. So you can go through and take a look. A couple things that I wanted to point out specifically, after most of the large sessions, you'll see these leaders meetup lounges. This is an opportunity where you'll actually get to meet people. They're gonna launch out to Zoom rooms where there'll be a bunch of different breakout rooms happening. And you'll be able to go in and actually talk to other attendees at the event. A lot of the other large events are really one way. You'll be watching a stream. But in these leaders meetup lounges, that's where you'll actually be able to connect to people. So you'll see those happen throughout the event, whether it's after panel discussions like this lead change session on rethinking plastics. You'll see another leaders meetup lounge after climate action, leaders meetup lounge. Um, so those are great places to go. You'll also see some Enactus country spotlights. Those will be specific things to different countries. 
Um, so you can scroll through, see what you're interested in, add it to your agenda. Um, and I think all of you that are here should have received um, an Enactus passport um, with a challenge to get you to participate in all of the different things that are on offer throughout the event. So make sure you check out that passport and upload it to social media. And uh, we wanted, well, we actually, uh, two of our faculty who are running um, our best practice sharing session at the end of the week really wanted to incentivize all of you to uh, get involved and be part of the event and share what you're doing on social media. So with their help, um, if you share your completed passport on Instagram, uh, you will get a chance to win $500 for your team. The team who shares the most number of completed passports by the end of the day on Friday will get $500. So that's not nothing, especially now that we don't need to travel. So make sure that you get your passport, get it uploaded, and get as many people from your team involved as possible. That's the really cool thing this year is we have an opportunity to get so many people involved um, because we don't need to get on a plane and go anywhere. So there are so many more people that can see what the event is about and participate. I did want to show you where you can watch team presentations because I know that that's a big piece of what everyone wants to see. So when you're in the, the, the event on Visibo, if you click up here at the top to the Teams section, This will take you out to meet the team so you can read about all of the different teams from around the world, but also taking, I think a lot of people are on this page today. Um, you'll see this link right here, watch their presentations here. So when you click on that, I'm hoping it's actually still sharing, but it will take you out to a page that has all of the different team presentations on it. So go see what other teams around the world are up to watch some of the lead change sessions, see what else there is that you're interested in, and make sure you go to some of the leaders meetup lounges so you actually get a chance to meet people. And then when you've done all of that, share your passport on Instagram. Don't forget to tag us, Enactus Canada, and tag your team. Um, and uh, hopefully your team can take home uh, the $500 prize. So just a couple extra things we wanted to note is throughout the week, make sure you're wearing your Team Canada swag if you have it. Um, and there is a social media packet you all should have received um, with some zoom back with a zoom background and a number of other things you can use um, but at the end of the day i just i'm going to stop sharing and go to um, this really just wanted to say um, thank you for leaning in. Thank you for being a part of this. I know that this isn't necessarily the World Cup that you might have been expecting in the spring, but what an incredible opportunity we have to engage with over 6,000 like-minded people from around the world and get to see some really cool content and meet some really amazing people. And the first people that you're going to get to meet are our panelists for today. So uh, this is always one of the highlights of the Accelerator training. Um, and I'm going to invite Catherine uh, from our team who's going to moderate the panel and we've got students from around the world who are here to share some best practices and talk about what an actus uh, is like in their country. So Catherine, over to you. Thank you, Nicole, and hello everybody. I'm so excited to be here today and with our wonderful panelists. So if everyone wants to turn on their video and on their sound, then we can get started. Just for everyone in the at home watching, the best way to view this is using the gallery view, which is in the top corner, top right corner. So as Nicole said, my name is Catherine and I am a program manager here at Enactus Canada. And I'm so excited to be with all of you to kick off our Enactus Virtual World Cup. And I think it's really, really exciting that all of us are able to be here virtually and have way more connection with way more students than we could ever be, ever have in person because so many more people can actually attend, which is why I'm so excited to be able to have a panel here with so many people from different parts of Canada, but then here from six people from all around the world. So we have six students here representing six different Enactus countries, which is fantastic. So thank you so much to all of you for being here today and taking time. And I know time zones are really challenging. Everyone, you can see where they're from and see what all of the effort everyone put into making sure that they could be a part of this panel. And I think that's fantastic. So we're gonna start off with some introductions from all of you um, with just a quick, 
who you are, what team you're a part of, what country you're from, um, and if you have a short message to say to our, our audience. We'll start off with Xander. All right, hello everyone and uh, welcome to the World Cup. I know I'm excited and I hope you all are too. Um, so yeah, my name is Xander. I'm co-president at Anactus Laurier, representing Canada, as you can see from my Anactus Canada merch. Um, I'm going into my second year at university. So this is my second year involved with Anactus. And I am so excited for everything to come. So glad to be part of this Anactus community. And for all of you out there, take advantage of all these opportunities at the World Cup. Thanks, Xander. Divya, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Divya from uh, team Inactus Sri Ram College of Commerce, and I'm representing India today. And um, I mean, I'm extremely excited that, you know, so many of us get to be a part of the World Cup this year that we for, fortunate, unfortunately didn't get to experience maybe in the previous years. So I'm really excited to uh, interact more with all of you in the next couple of days and today as well. Thank you, Yusra. Hey everyone, uh, I'm also so glad to be part of you here among uh, these wonderful panelists and in the World Cup for its uh, online edition. I'm uh, Yusra Shibyan from uh, Enactus Inside Jedida uh, in Morocco and uh, I've been involved with the team for three years and it's um, really honorable to get the chance to be part of the World Cup and I wish all the competing teams the very best of luck in their presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Bruno. So hello everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. So my name is Bruno. I'm representing Enactus Brazil and I'm part of Enactus Campus São Carlos, which is uh, from the University of Sao Paulo. And I'm really happy to be here. And I, I've been an Enactus student since 2017 when I got into the university. Thank you. And we have Yash. Hey guys, it's great to be here today. I'm Yash from the UK. Our team is in Actus Nottingham. I'm the local portfolio director, which means I look after all the social projects in Actus Nottingham runs locally in the UK. So I joined in Actus last year, exactly this time in September, which means this month also marks my first year anniversary with an Actus. And I'm really excited to see what all of us have done together and the kind of impact we've achieved all over the world. So I think it's a great opportunity to see all of that. Thank you. And finally, we have um, hi, hi guys. Um, in, in, in Africa, particularly in South Africa, uh, this is the proper time to say good evening. Um, I know from wherever you are, it's a different time. Um, so hi to all of you. The name is Kikilitsu Malule, and I am the institutional president of Bali University of Technology. And I'm here in representing Nexa South Africa. So yeah, it's good to be here. Um, I'm looking forward to learning from all of you and to enjoying um, the entire World Cup uh, of 2020. So I joined Inectas in 2018. Yeah, in 2018, in my first year, um, till today. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's, been, it's been quite a good experience. And yeah, thanks. Thank you. So we have a number of questions for our panelists today. What we're going to, going to do to make sure we hear from everyone is I'm going to ask specific people a few questions and we'll kind of rotate through. If as you're listening uh, to our audience, um, you think of more questions specifically for someone or just another question, you can use our Q&A feature, which is at the bottom of your screen, and at, type in a question, which we'll answer at the end of the panel. So if you can think of them and type them in as you think them or at the end. So our first question, and I'm going to go to Divya and Yusra for this. Can you tell us a little bit about your team? How many team members do you have? What kind of roles do you have? Anything you'd like to share? I think I'll, uh, yeah, I'll go first. So yes, so we're a 64 member team and we, uh, our course in college is a three year course. So we have third year members who act as advisory board members to the team, second year members who are executive board members and essentially they are departmentalized into their particular projects. And we have two presidents who uh, sort of spearhead all of the work in an actus. And finally, we have our first year team, which uh, comprises of around 30 to 33, 35 members. And 
uh, we don't departmentalize them into any particular project. They sort of uh, find, they sort of do all work across all our projects. So that's the kind of structure that we have. And yes, I'm in fact going into my third year now. So I have to sort of take more of a backseat uh, in my inactive work, but definitely it's, um, it's, I think it gives us an opportunity to sort of uh, oversee the work that's happening of our team members. And yeah, that's the structure of my team. Thank you, and Yusra. Thank you. Uh, well, this year we've been a 25 member team and uh, from different majors and levels. And we've been divided into main categories. Uh, the first category works on projects and uh, it, it mainly tracks the evolution of the projects and their impact. And one of the main key roles here are the VP projects and chief, and chief projects. And the second category is in charge of organizing events and fundraising activities so that the income of the uh, team can be raised and people who are in charge of the projects can find, can find sorry, uh, money to have supplies and materials for the pro prototypes and projects. And we also have some key roles like designers who are in charge of posting the masterpieces on our Instagram and also um, a person that is in charge of looking for opportunities with other teams and uh, incubators and everything can, can, that the team can benefit from. So that's the structure of uh, our team. Thank you guys. I know it, from a Canadian perspective, it's pretty interesting to hear the similarities and differences. It really highlights how, how much of a global network we are and how similar we all are, um, but also so especially different. Um, and that's really what makes our network so interesting. So then for um, yeah, Xander and Yash, could you tell us very briefly, and I know it's easy to go on about this, but a little bit about the projects that you were presenting at World Cup. Sure, so I guess I can uh, take this first. So with Anactus Laurier, our main project is called EarthSets, um, and we produce dissolvable tablets of shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. We're really tackling the problem of single-use plastics, especially the plastics that we use to hold the products that keep us clean. So it's ironic in a sense that we're creating even more waste when we're trying to keep ourselves clean. So that's something we're trying to combat. Um, and throughout that, partnering with another one of our enterprises, we employ adults with developmental disabilities to come help and produce some of our tablets. So it's kind of a full circle through our whole value chain. We're making sure that we're staying sustainable. Um, and yeah, we're working on scaling, getting into Loblaws this year, actually, and working with other partnerships. So it's, it's, it's really exciting and I'm, I'm glad to be able to be a part of it. Thanks, Xander. And, and Yash, the project that your team is working on, or one of the projects. Right, so the, the project we will be presenting in the World Cup is Foodprint. So Foodprint's mission is to tackle the problem of food waste and food poverty. So while a lot of people in the UK and all around the world have to go hungry, at the same time, a lot of food also gets wasted. So, I mean, there's a stat out about this. In the UK alone, 9.5 million tons of food ends up in landfills, out of which 70% is still fit to consume. So, we try to get this food and redistribute it within our community. We do so firstly through our social supermarket, wherein we sell this food in underpublished areas at a 60% discount. Secondly, food on wheels with a mobile supermarket, we go across impoverished areas in Nottingham and again, redistribute this food. And lastly, we have a commercial part of this business as well, which is the bread group project, where we convert bread that would have otherwise gone to landfills into beer, and we sell it. And the money that is generated goes back into Footprint to fund other good ideas. Very cool. And I know hearing what everyone's projects is certainly one of my highlights of World Cup and our big events. So hopefully throughout the rest of the questions, you, the rest of you who didn't answer this question can kind of sprinkle some tidbits in. And if not, at the end, we'll, we'll circle back and hear all about your projects as well. Um, so then Bruno and Kiki Litsu, can you tell us a little bit about what it's been like during COVID and the pandemic just in your countries? Uh, Bruno, would you like to go first? Um, so here in Brazil, uh, it's a little bit different from other countries because we are a huge country, we are continental. And the pandemic started uh, uh, more in the Southeast region and it's now spread the, the whole country. So we have some regions that have already passed most of the pandemic, the problem, 
and some regions that are starting. So we have different situations in the same country, different cultures. And so what we try to do here, which I, as an active student, for example, we had a, a crisis committee and we tried to see what was going on in each project region and try to help specific what they're going through because we couldn't have a unique uh, solution. We had to like adapt. And I think that that says a lot about how is Brazil because we're a really huge country with different people. So that's basically it. Thank you. And Kiki Litsu? Um, I, I think we need to agree, all of us, that um, this is unlike anything we've ever experienced globally in the, in the past seven, five years or so. So it's been very hard. Um, uh, for my count particularly, I would say the, the, the impact that we've experienced, I'm going to talk specifically about the personal experiences that we, I, I, I've observed in, in, from uh, the surrounding communities and the economical um, impact as well as the social impact. Personally, this has been um, a very hard time for most of the people within the country. It brought some anxieties, depression, people feared, and they're still scared of even getting infected by um, the COVID-19 COVID um, disease. So, so it, it's actually dealing with most of the people in a negative way personally because it's bringing, bringing up um, um, unhealthiness in terms of their mental state. And then economically, obviously, in my country, um, the challenge, the main challenge has been most people losing their jobs, mainly because um, the companies closed down and then some did a retrenchment here and there. So um, it's it really um, been affecting people in negative ways. So when, when you, you have um, a lower rate, a higher rate of unemployment, automatically that affects your economy as, as a country. So it, it, it has uh, affected us in a very negative way. And then lastly, socially, we, we I think he froze. We'll give him a second. Okay, well, I will um, thank you, Kiki Lee. So I'll give you a minute to maybe reconnect your internet. But that was a, a really a way to describe it. We're all experiencing something really unprecedented and we don't know what the future holds. But if we look at it through a lens of what can we do and, and what, specifically what our inactive students can do. Um, it's a lot more optimistic and exciting than if we look at it through a different lens. So thank you for sharing those insights. Um, kind of on a similar note, um, Yash and Yusra, can you tell us a little bit about how your projects have had to adapt or pivot during oh, COVID? Sure. Thank you. Well, um, it, it was very challenging for us to keep working on the project. So like all inactive teams, either in our country or I may say even in other countries, but um, it, it kind of gave us time to reflect about the projects we were working on, on and the strategy that we used to adapt in um, when we, we, when we could gather. So we reflected about our projects and the set new strategies and take a lot of advantage from uh, digital tools and learn how to um, to make our projects known through either their Instagram pages or Facebook pages. And it was also challenging to keep up in to keep in touch with our collaborators for the projects because they were people from rural areas, people from other cities. Um, so it was challenging, but yet we learned a lot. We learned how to make daily or weekly uh, meetings and uh, we knew that for what's coming next, there's no excuse to delay a meeting or anything because we have everything needed. So that's what we learned. We're not very grateful about for the pandemic, yet we learned some new things. Yeah, it's definitely a time of change and, and figuring out how to make yeah, things work, uh, for sure. Yash. Yeah, so our projects, both those run locally within the UK and internationally, had to really adapt fast and rapidly or else we could actually see the possibility of closure within the coming months. So in fact, what's interesting for us is that the pandemic forced us to think about our business models in a way different and unique way. One in which we hadn't really had thought about before. So a quick example over here, one of our projects, Codex. So Codex aims at democratizing the tech sector, the tech industry and teaching coding to children with ASD and those belonging to low socioeconomic backgrounds. So prior to the pandemic, all of our classes were in person, all done physically. But during the pandemic, that really wasn't a possibility. We had to all switch online. 
And initially, we were very skeptical about how the turnout would have been because it was online. We did not really expect the same number of children, right? However, to our surprise, our client base prior to the pandemic was less than 80. As of now, it's at 800. Because, because of the pandemic, we're no longer restricted just to Nottingham, but a cluster run all across the UK and even the US now. So something similar was seen in a lot of our projects as well. And I think going forward, um, the business model that we're going to be using, it's going to be a mix of what it was pre-COVID and in these times of COVID. So, yep. Thank you. I know uh, so many of our teams are pivoting and finding ways to do things digitally. And it's, it's surprising to see what the results are. Some are absolutely taking off, just like what you were saying, Ash, and other people are, are still pivoting and making it work. But everyone is doing their best. And I think that's truly really phenomenal and really inspirational to see so many amazing young people doing such great things during such a challenging time. And it's just looking at our time. Divya, if you want to also speak about some of your projects and how they pivoted, we definitely have time for that. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I want to particularly speak about our project ASBA, which is in the water sector. So we essentially set up community water filtration plants. Uh, India has, you know, a huge percentage of its population that don't have access to clean drinking water. And for us, you know, it's sort of something that's at the turn of a tap and we have water at our homes, but for majority of the population, that isn't the case. And so especially during the pandemic, when, you know, you had to follow social distancing measures and when, you know, you couldn't gather in crowds and those sorts of things, it really, we sort of had to take a step back. And like you rightly mentioned, we had to evaluate uh, how and rethink and reimagine what our project meant. So specifically for Asba, I think two things that really helped us was one, we had uh, good on-ground collaborations with local partners, NGOs, who uh, were continuing to, op to operate during the pandemic. And I think that helped us a lot. But more importantly, um, each of the plants that we set up, the water filtration plants, we uh, employ two women who sort of um, operate the plant and they're the entrepreneurs who take care of everything end to end of the plant. So the first thing that we did once, you know, the news broke out, we had, a, we spoke to them and they told us that water is an, is an essential and my community, you know, it's people have grown to become dependent on this uh, source of water. So we can't shut down the plants, but what we can do is we can develop strategies to sort of prevent uh, huge crowds in the plant. And the great thing about this was that all of this they did independently. The entrepreneurs who we'd identified, we, when we started out the project, we'd never sort of uh, forecast that, you know, this sort of a transformational change within the entrepreneurs would take place. But I think they've really, during the pandemic, they've really shown us how they can rethink a lot of things. And yeah, they're, they're our frontline heroes. I think in addition to uh, all of the doctors and um, the manual scavengers, everyone who's putting their life at risk every day, I think our operators as well sort of join those group of people who are putting themselves at risk just to make sure that, is, that an essential uh, commodity reaches people. So yeah, it's really just taught us that uh, the power that we have as students in creating entrepreneurs. I think Inactus is not just about us being entrepreneurs, but also creating entrepreneurs in the local communities. So yeah, that's been the realization that our team has had that, uh, and we hope that we can continue to create that impact and create more entrepreneurs post COVID as well. Thank you so much, Divya. Yeah, that, a lot of that really rang true in, in my head. I'm sure it also resonated with a lot of our attendees as well. And just to kind of switch it up a little bit, um, Xander, Bruno, and Kiki Litsu, can you tell us a little bit about how your team operations have changed? I know projects are the forefront of what we do, but in the back end, we have the people who are doing it. So how, how have your teams had to change and, and maneuver to make things still happen? Xander, if you want to kick us off. Yeah, for sure. So before this pandemic struck, I'm sure none of us were very familiar with Zoom or these other online platforms. And we were all able to, um, we're thankful for technology that we're able to still connect with people. Even on this call, we're across the world and in the same webinar together. Um, but near the beginning of quarantine, I was given my position as co-president of our Enactus chapter. So at this point, I had to figure out, okay, what do I do next? So one of our first things was hiring our full executive team, our, our full team of VPs. So conducting Zoom interviews, this is something I wasn't really used to before, so kind of adapting along the way. Um, and that was five, six months ago. Fast forward today, so comfortable hopping on a call with anybody. It's an easy way to talk with anyone. 
Um, and we understand that it's important to keep the momentum going with the whole Enactus team. Our Enactus Laurier, we have about 167 members. So there are a lot of people we have to try to keep engaged. We don't want anything to die out. So some of our projects have been running throughout the summer, um, have changed things to be online in a safe environment. Um, but we've been having um, periodic calls with our executive team, engaging with them, reaching out to other people, just checking in, even not necessarily only focusing on what's going on in Enactus, getting to know each other. How are you, right? And really being able to build those personal connections. As that is something we all, we all took for granted before this pandemic started, being able to see people and make those social interactions. And that's something I find personally is really important to maintain, even though we're on a virtual environment, we're still able to see people's faces through a screen. So through this pandemic has really allowed us to see, okay, with this limited time that we're, we're on calls, what is it we want to do? We've been able to be more efficient as well. We're like, okay, let's get down to, get, let's get down to business. Um, we can do what we want. We have also created a new website throughout this quarantine and been posting our um, new job postings on there, getting people engaged, have been posting on social medias, getting people engaged. Um, anything really that opens it up to the broader Laurier and Canada and an activist community um, as we want to keep everyone connected. Thanks, Sander. You guys have certainly been busy uh, as you've been preparing for the year, but also World Cup. So that's fantastic. Uh, Bruno. Um, so yeah, basically you, in one week we had to go like from 20-30% of online to 100% because normally we do like uh, in-person meetings at the university, at the campus, uh, after classes and everything and we had to go 100% online. And I mean, we kind of did that already during the summer vacation because it's uh, our, like three months and then uh, people come from all around Brazil here so we had to keep our projects going and then to go online was a solution and then we already used to it kind of somehow but i would say like 20 percent ready and uh, during, when the pandemic started we were about to start our, our recruiting program so we had to uh, to turn everything also 100 percent online i remember my friend who was running this program he was like oh my god like everything that i worked for in the last months is gone but no and what i really liked is how is, is how the team team brazil they work together uh, to uh, to create solutions. So, for example, uh, he had meetings with teams from other universities who already had this online uh, recruiting process, and then we learned a lot from it. And when we did ours, we talked with another a group and said, okay, what went wrong, what was uh, good and what wasn't. And I think uh, that is something that uh, it kind of changed in my Enactus uh, group, that we talked more with other teams, and we, we were more connected than when we were uh, online. And I think that's something good that came out from it. Good. Yeah. And yeah, that's basically, we, we are talking more uh, between ourselves with, uh, with the uh, communities that we work with, with everyone. Even though it's online, it's a shame, but I, that's what we have until some months now. That's what we can do. Fantastic. Kiki Litsu? Um, um, I, I think we need to also acknowledge the fact that this pandemic brought to most of the people um, the, the acknowledge it forced most of us to actually acknowledge the role of technology, particularly information technology to our lives. So having to uh, now drift from initially doing the, um, the, the project work using our hands, getting used to actually interacting with the beneficiaries and one another as, team, as a team in person, um, um, that, that, that trip brought a lot of challenges, but it actually needed a quick response in terms of now now realize the new era, the new era, the, 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 the um, industrial revolution coming forward to us, which is that of actually being in, uh, engaging with um, the, the information technology, making use of the social media platforms, now coming up with new ideas um, that's going to allow you to actually focus on your um, projects uh, irrespective of whether you are together or you are not together. So we have got two projects in my team. Um, both of them require uh, uh, for our team to actually um, engage one another in testing. So the one is in the energy sector, um, which is a, a coal manufacturing project, and the other one is in the agricultural sector. So um, how we adjusted to each of them was different because of how each project is structured. Now, if the agricultural project, since most of the people that we have adopted as uh, beneficiaries in those in that project in Tiga are, are actually not from within the team, 
we now had to introduce a new communication model that's going to allow us to actually impart and relay the information that we use to um, um, uh, equip them with using um, your, your WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a social media platform. So it allowed us to actually conduct um, digital um, workshops, which was a very new thing, having to record a video and then send it to your WhatsApp group so that people read, um, uh, people watch it and then take some notes. And then you actually have to go further um, to question and assess it, whether the, the information that you relate to them, they did understand it and they can implement it. And then um, now we, we are forced to even introduce new ideas come up with ways um, the, the, the digital platforms that are going to allow them to, to actually sell their produce, even when they can't be in contact with their uh, potential customers and, and their um, 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 traditional customers. So with the energy sector project, luckily, it is managed by um, our very own students. They are, it, it's their business, the, the, the um, coal manufacturing project. Now, how we adjusted to it was only with regard to planning for the future. We couldn't do anything since we can't meet up. So the planning went quite well in terms of now we realize that um, the production of this coal, we can't continue um, uh, 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 relying on machinery that needs us in person there. We now have to introduce automated machinery to actually produce this coal so that the production and, and, and the processes of, of, of the business can actually continue irrespective of whether we are there or we are not there. So um, we think, like, like, I think it's Bruno who said, we move from, in my team, we move from 1% um, um, digital engagement to 100%. We were not really engaging um, digitally, myself and, and my executive team, as well as um, the entire team of value investor technology. So we, we, we quickly had to move to 100% engagement because we were now in separate areas. We were now regulated by the lockdown that we can't go out at certain times, we can't meet up, blah, blah, all that. So. We, we actually had to now in, introduce and adapt to the new culture of engaging every day digitally through Zoom, through WhatsApp. So that, that's basically how we adjusted to um, the, the, the um, pandemic that hit us. And, and, and yeah, I, I would love for all of us to actually acknowledge um, its role in terms of re making us realize that we now need to think ahead, not only think um, 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 with, uh, with, uh, with um, the, the the, the setup that we always have to meet up in person. The digital world is here. It's actually um, um, here. Most people need to acknowledge it role that we have to make use of it. So that, that's basically how we actually adjusted, adjusted our project as, as a Nectar's value investor technology team. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think there's some really good insights from, from all of you in terms of the future is now and how are we going to make it work? Not, not how are we going to dwell and, and wish it was different, but how can we make the, this work best for us and, and adapt and, and decide what the future looks like, which I think is really exciting. And we just have a few more, uh, more lighthearted questions, but I think something that's really interesting to hear from people all across the world. Um, so Divya, Yustra, and Bruno, can you tell us a little bit about your favorite Enactus memory? Bruno, if you want to kick us off. Yes, sure. Uh, so my favorite memory was actually last year in October, and then we held a a, a, a training session with the teams all over Brazil, and they, they came to my city, São Carlos, and then we had a weekend and a full of training and networking and everything. And then one of the lectures was from Marcia. Marcia is a she has a business now, and we worked with her in a project since 2017. So we had been working with with Marcia for two years now, and now she had her own business and she could raise her, her three sons uh, alone. She's a single mom. And then when we met her in 2017, she wouldn't even speak to us, you know, like only say hello. And she was really shy. And after two years, not only she was empowered and had her own business, but she had a, she held a lecture for more than 100 persons. Wow. And then she, she nailed it. It was, I remember that day then, that I thought, okay, if I stop now my, to be an access student, I will fulfill all my expe expectation because there was a, I think the best memory that we'll have for some time now it was the end of a cycle and to see Marcia to speak with her heart. Uh, so, what, so what was the result of our works during all this year was a really, really wonderful like, time to be there. It was amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yusra. 
Um, well, my, my best and active memory so far, and since I really miss uh, having physical contact with my team members, it was the last uh, team building we've had. It was about seven, uh, seven months ago, yeah. And it was not really planned. We just gathered after class and said, okay, let's have a team building activity near to the beach. And yeah, it was uh, at the end of the day, at the end of a very tiring day, and we were about to start the term again. So we hadn't met for like a month before since everyone was busy with exams and uh, everything going on. So um, we had other people that joined us. Uh, we were not expecting to recruit, but they joined us that day during the team building and now they are still team members. So um, everyone, like we were all playing together and some shy people that weren't really used to talk in the weekly meetings or uh, in general weren't really productive and they just uh, start throwing like games, random games that day and uh, it's really good because you also uh, get to know each one's strength and preferences so you can really give them, you, you can seek people's potential so you can really give um, like tasks or you can all share tax, tasks accordingly. So, and since uh, we haven't met for so long, this will be my favorite memory for, I don't know, the next team building maybe <laughs> when it's happening, we don't know yet, but yeah, that was the best memory so far. Thank you. And Divya? Um, choosing one memory was quite hard for me because I think all of our inactive sort of experiences have so many amazing things that we have so many amazing things that happened to us. But I think one sort of thing that really stayed with me was this one time when, uh, so we sort of have like a cycle wherein there's a point of time, you know, where your projects are running well and you start thinking of ways in which you can start new projects and what you, what sectors you could work in. So that phase generally isn't the very best phase to be in because, you know, it's a lot of challenges. So uh, this one time, so I was, I was demotivated about the kind I was, you know, it's a lot of hard work that you put in. I mean, when you don't see results, it's, sort of a little demotivating and so I went I visited one of the plants that we had already established under the project that I spoke of earlier and I met the entrepreneur there and I was speaking to her and I was telling her how I was feeling and she was telling me about how she said you know the kind of power that you guys have uh, my personal story she was saying that her personal story is that before she had to depend on her husband for any sort of expense in her family, anything at all, if it was medicines for her son, if it was something for herself, whatever it was. And she told me that once you guys came in, uh, I don't have to do that anymore. I stand on my own two feet. And that's because of the work that you've done. And I think you sometimes need that reminder about the, the, the why of why you're doing everything. You know, the question of like, why am I putting in so much hard work? It's because I have the potential to create that impact. So I think that sort of, that memory stayed with me and I would definitely say that thinking back, it makes me smile every time. Thank you. I, I think really at the heart of everything is about people and the, the people that we're helping and we work with and, and everything. And I think that's so important to remember, especially digitally, how can we still create those memories and create that impact and interact with people just differently. So thank you for sharing those memories and, and people at home, I hope you kind of take, take some time and think about your favorite and active memory. Um, and then kind of thinking to our next question, what are you looking forward to in the year ahead? So I hope you all think about this, but uh, Xander Yash and Kiki Litsu, will you tell us? Uh, yeah, right. just wanna kick, oh. Right. Yeah. So, so firstly, I think, and all of us would agree with me on this one. I, I'm really looking forward to like seeing the entire team once again, like in person, meeting one on one instead of, you know, a Zoom call. And it's been almost six months now. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think in addition to that, I'm also looking forward to see how most of the work that we've done and all the businesses that we've created, all the new models that we've put in, like the pre COVID and all of that, how all of that comes together when everything really starts to open up, when the lockdowns all over the world begin to open up totally. So, yeah, that's what I'm really excited about. I agree. I can't wait to see everyone in person eventually. Uh, Kiki Litsu. He might be frozen. Oh, he's back. Kiki Litsu, what are you looking forward to? Um, the main thing that I'm looking forward to um, in this new year of, of the Nectars is for my team is, is, is winning the national competitions. 
which speaks to actually impacting more lives, changing the lives of the people economically, changing the um, environmental conditions of our beneficiaries and our country generally, and also ensuring that there's actually um, um, connections that can keep them in, in the business context as, as, as um, the, the prospective business um, owners. So that's what I'm looking forward to winning the national she speaks to changing the lives of the people yes oh i obviously i cannot wait to uh, meet up with my uh, fellow um inactors members but um that, that that's beside the point the main the main point is actually changing the lives of the people and, and making sure that the project that we are running with actually if uh, they can be in, in a point whereby they participate in the community in the economy of the country meaning we want to actually make sure that achieve the goal to want to make sure that you achieve the goal of changing these projects to becoming um, well-established businesses that actually have got impact in the economy of the country, whilst at the same time changing um, the lives of the people in, in their households. So that's that's the only thing that I'm looking forward to: winning the nationals with my team, changing the lives of the people. Great answer. Great answer, Xander. I would say the thing I'm looking forward to the most is just learning more about Enactus and being able to be a part of this amazing Enactus community. Um, through my first year, I joined one of our enterprises and wasn't really sure if our other Enactus enterprises or what overall Enactus really was. Um, I was competing on the regionals team for the one enterprise I was a part of, and I started hearing about some of the other enterprises, and I thought to myself, this is pretty cool. Some, the, quite a bit of change is actually being made here. Um, and now in this role, I have co-president of overall Enactus. I'm really able to work with all of the individual enterprises, being able to create the most social impact and being able to work with all of you, this global Enactus network. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to meeting people, learning new things, and I'm always keeping my mind open to uh, learn new information from all of you. Thank you. So those were all of the pre-planned questions. If everyone wants to take a moment and think of some questions you might have, the audience members might have for our panelists, and use the Q&A feature, which is on the bottom left portion of, the, of your screen, and send in some questions, that would be fantastic. We actually already have one sitting for us from Vanessa. And I'll leave this to anyone who has a really good answer. Feel free to um, start talking. So it's other than Zoom, what kind of tools have you used that have helped you during COVID-19 and your shift to digital? Does anyone have anything specific that comes to mind? Well, for our team, not only for COVID, also pre-COVID, our whole Enactus team is on this platform called Basecamp. And here on this platform, if anyone's unfamiliar with it, um, there are different projects for created for each enterprise and there's a whole Enactus headquarters is kind of a place where any announcements are made. So especially through the pandemic um, and keeping people engaged, for example, for nationals, we had a full team watch party. So we were all able to have, have fun and do that together. So being able to post that through Basecamp, keeping people engaged and there, there are different features on there too. So you can really ask people and get them engaged in the conversation. Thanks, Sander. Does anyone else have any other? Yeah, Bruno. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, we, we use lots of different tools as WhatsApp, Google Meet, or Zoom. Um, I think the main point is that we as a team, we had to find out something that works for everyone. Uh, because we already tried to use, okay, this platform is really good, but nobody liked it, nobody liked to use. And we have uh, sometimes this other platform that is not that good technically, but everyone likes it and use it. So uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we talked to everyone and said, okay, we will uh, use Google Meets, for example, for uh, online calling and Slack for communication. And we came with this agreement and now everyone is doing that all the time. And that helps a lot. So there, there are lots of options, but the main thing is that everyone should use the same thing in uh, as much time as, as they can to communicate. Great. Anybody else? If not, we can use her. Did you have something? Yeah, uh, well, there's just a platform that no, uh, no one mentioned previously. It's uh, Microsoft Teams. And since uh, we had uh, accounts previously set by the school and we had to be used to that platform since our online classes were held there. So it was um, all the students of the team, all team members had their account and it was really a good platform to 
uh, for the simulation of the competition while we were practicing before the uh, uh, national competition. And uh, yeah, that was it. Microsoft Teams was a very uh, beneficial tool for during the pandemic. Fantastic. And, and I think one of our um, attendees actually gave a suggestion. Uh, it's called Miro, which a lot of our Canadian delegation, you use this during uh, our leadership summit, but it's a really cool collaboration tool that I encourage you to Google. Thanks, Charleston, for reminding us of that. And then the next question we have is from Cody. Um, what's your relationship like with your university or your school administration? How do you get them more involved? Um, Yash, do you have a, an answer you're thinking of? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, within our university, within our Enactus community, we have uh, two really helpful folks. They're your university advisors. So one of them is David Fogg, just a shout out to him. So he's really, he really helps us with a lot of things like the legal procedures and brainstorming ideas. And he's technically a part of the university. So this way, all of it remains in the loop. And that's how our university kind of, you know, we all work together that way. So, yep. Thanks. Um, Divya, did you have any, anything to add? Yeah, sure. It's just that with uh, we have one faculty advisor and uh, it's more about how she's always there to support us. And it's just about us sort of checking, with, checking in with her. And sort of, I think one thing that maybe an active teams may not do uh, is keep their faculty advisor as an active, I mean, treat them as an active member and constantly tell them, you know, this is what we're doing. And I think they have a lot of value addition to offer. So definitely, yes, I think it's just more about having a two-way open channel and yeah. That's a great piece of advice. And it kind of flows nicely into uh, another question somebody asked, but what is a piece of advice that you could give a team who's just starting out, so who's establishing themselves um, during these challenging times? Um, Kiki Lizzo, do you have any insight on that? I, I would say, I would say um, for a new team in particular, invest more in your membership. Invest in them in terms of knowledge and information. Keep them with relevant social entrepreneurship um, knowledge. When you have such a big people in terms of knowledge, it becomes easier for the team to actually progress with its activities. Invest in knowledge as a team. Make sure that you are well equipped with the relevant business information, the relevant um, um, social information, environmental information. When you are uh, um, filled with information, it becomes easier to execute and change the lives and conditions of um, other external people outside your team. So that's, that's the first and, and foremost thing that I would advise you. Invest in your team membership, give them resources, give them access to um, different resources that, that are going to allow them to have um, necessary knowledge to actually uh, um, implement um, what you call um, the, 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 the project activities. And then secondly, I would say, before you embark on any project um, um, as, as a new team, make sure that you are solving an existing challenge. That's it to actually empathizing with your targeted communities, doing and conducting your needs analysis. Get to engage with your targeted um, community so that when you come up with a solution, it becomes a solution that is really um, needed out there because sometimes we tend to bring solutions that the market isn't really um, um, in need of, which um, uh, uh, drives to the negativity of the business. You want, you want, you want to really become um, a successful enterprise if you are solving an unexistent challenge. So that's the, the, the second um, thing. That's the second um, um, advice I would give to a new team during this time. And then lastly, the challenge with, with as we know that any group of people in Inectus particularly, we have got the leadership. The leadership, listen to the people that you're working with. Make sure that you listen to one another. Even if you are not in a position of, of, of leadership or executive, listen to one another because Different as, as different as we are um, as human beings, our differing opinions can actually build something solid that betters the world for everyone who lives in it. So that, that, that's a um, piece of advice I would give to a, a new team in, in this guy. Great, thank you. Just as a heads up for everyone who's typing in questions at home, please make sure you use the Q&A feature, not the chat feature, otherwise I won't see your questions. Um, we've had some of our staff kind of put them into the Q&A feature, so if you've already typed them, I see them, but just for the future. Bruno, I have a question for you, since you were talking about recruitment a little bit earlier. 
how, how are you recruiting new team members virtually and how has it changed your strategies and tactics? Um, basically the whole uh, process, we held the same, but we turned it uh, virtually. And we, we, we were always uh, trying to be clear with communication and uh, try to, uh, okay, now we're, uh, we're doing a, a, an activity to see if you can do this. And uh, we also talked with other, other teams, as I mentioned earlier, but we basically turned it online. We didn't have, we didn't like make uh, a whole new process because that would be like hard, even harder. So we had already our, pro our process that was already like for many years now we do this, this thing and we only adapted and with the help of the others uh, with, and with fe feedbacks and everything, we, we turned online. So maybe that's a good tip. Like it's okay to do a whole new thing, but if you can adapt the older one, maybe you won't have like a, a, a harder job. It can be hard, it's a, it's a solution, but maybe if you can adapt this old style to a new one, uh, to seeing, okay, I would do an interview, but you have to think why I am doing this interview, what I want from this candidate and everything. That's, that's what, uh, something you need to, to think about. That's great, thank you. Um, Xander, do you have anything to add on to that? You have a pretty large Canadian team. Yeah, I would say basically, um, again, kind of as Bruno said, kind of keeping those same foundations, um, actually making sure you have a video call with them, have an interview to really talk with someone, as that's something that's absolutely crucial and to be able to see, to build relationships. And something I even did when interviewing was throwing in some questions not related to an actress at all, right? Kind of those curveballs to see who they really are, who these people really are. Um, and that's, that can get the conversation going to form a deeper relationship. One population which we are struggling with a little bit this year to attract are the first years coming into university, as they are the group that take up, uh, usually at our club's fair, we're able to promote it all throughout the week. So this year we actually ingrained our um, Anactus, we had an Anactus session during our orientation week, which is currently happening last week and this week. Um, and also holding a club's fair this year, using our social medias as much as possible, pushing it out to as many people um, as we can never have a shortage of members. Always having applications available. We have this year, what we actually implemented was a rotational program. So for people who aren't able to secure a position on an enterprise, they can apply for this position, which it's a running application. There's no limit to how many positions we have but spending a few weeks on each of our different projects to get a feel of what Enactus is like and what we actually do here at Enactus. So we're, we're piloting that project this year. So we're hoping that that will get some good attention from first years and from everyone else. But um, again, as, as Bruno mentioned, we're all adapting in these interesting times and hoping for the best. We're accepting what we have. We can't change anything. So we're working with what we got. Thanks, Sander. We have uh, a bunch of questions that are just rolling in. So I'm going to um see if we can get some rapid fire ones off here but uh let's let's do our best so lucas was wondering how do you keep in touch with people affected that are in your projects or or experience benefits of your projects where technology isn't well developed maybe they don't have access to it or have um help uh yash do you do you have an answer for that right so i mean it's it's relatively easier for us to get in touch with like a beneficiary group within the UK, but I think this question is particularly valid for where a question for where our uh, operations are other than the UK. So essentially in Ghana, in Kenya, and in Uganda. So over there, particularly how we do it is through our partner. So we have a project partner in these locations and through our project partner, it's them that usually go over there and just make sure that everything is running fine, that we, we ensure proper communications through them. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Anise was wondering, how do you manage your studies and Enactus projects and, and everything that you do while you're studying and working on Enactus? Divya, do you have an answer for that? Yeah, sure. So uh, my course is a business course, right? So a lot of the things that I'm learning theoretically, I'm sort of applying in Enactus. So I think they somehow go hand in hand for me. But I think it's just a lot about time management. And if you're able to sort of figure out um, this much of my time is dedicated to an actress and then the rest of it I need, you know, instead of slacking off and maybe actually putting the effort to make yourself to get yourself to study. And so I think that way, if you're able to sort of manage your time, you will be definitely in actress, I think is definitely easy to be able to do both and excel in both. So, yeah. 
Fantastic, thank you. Uh, Yustra, how do you guys fund your operations? Do you have grants, sponsorships? How else do you uh, fund everything? Yeah, well, mainly it's, uh, we organize fundraising events during the year. Um, so we could gather as much uh, income as we can to, uh, for two projects so they can buy their supplies and materials and all the stuff needed for the prototypes. So mainly it's from, um, from uh, fundraising activities. But when it, when it comes to organizing big events, yeah, we definitely go for sponsoring and we just um, uh, try to contact as much as enterprises as we can to convince them about all, because there are some enterprises that have never heard of Enactus. So it's a, the opportunity to um, open their eyes to a very large uh, network, global network. And yeah, when, when it comes to events, we go for sponsoring mainly. Great. Uh, Bruno, can you, or if any, Bruno is specifically you, but if anyone else thinks of an answer to this, feel free to raise your, raise your hand and I'll call on you. But do you have any specific examples of collaboration with other Enactus teams that you know of? Um, yes. Uh, so the event that I uh, told you guys uh, from my next memory from last year, it was a team training conference. And then we organized with uh, five other teams from around the uh, region. So it, uh, we did it all the organization online uh, with video calls because we were in different cities, but then everyone came together last October uh, to San Carlos and then uh, we had like this event together. And it, it was like my, my first time and also from my uh, Anaxos team that we did something of okay, 100% online. And then at the day it was everyone there and then we met each other like in person for the first time. And I think that's something really cool. And then other teams are also doing in Brazil and I hope worldwide and that is working together. Uh, we are a global network, also a, a big uh, network inside each country. And then like, if you're having a problem, someone, uh, the chances that someone, someone already had this problem and solved it, it's big. So just ask, there's, there's no uh, wrong questions or no dumb questions. So just ask. And yeah, that's basically, uh, we have a, a group, a WhatsApp group with the, all the leaders from Anaxis Brazil. And like it's active all day long. We have, every, okay, uh, I need help with uh, a recruiting program. I need help with this. And then there's always someone there to help always. And I think that's really, really great. Thanks so much, Bruno. I, I think that's a really great sentiment and a really good way to kind of wrap up our, our Q&A. Um, so everyone who's listening, take, a, take note of what Bruno said and, and use the World Cup to meet more people, meet people around you. Um, both in Canada or we have some people who have joined us from other countries, which is fantastic, but also people in the leaders meetup lounges and during events um, throughout World Cup, meet people from other countries, make connections, exchange your LinkedIn's or your emails, um, and think about what you can do to leverage the global network and the national network that we have. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. It was a really great way to wrap everything up. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of our wonderful panelists for being here today. This was a really great conversation and I know I really enjoyed it and I'm sure everyone at home did as well. I know that thank you so much for putting all of the effort into being here. I know so many of you are in different time zones all around the world. So thanks so much for making the effort to, to be a part of this and I hope that you got something out of it as well and enjoyed yourselves. To our students, make sure you say hi to these people when you see them in panels and see them in Leaders Meetup lounges and say that you enjoyed and that you've watched them. Um, and I'm sure that they will love to meet you as well and see you from the other side of the camera. And take advantage of this week, guys. It, we have a huge, huge opportunity to meet so many people and hear so many different things from all across the world. I am sure I will see you all around. Make sure you're sharing your experience on social media. And like Nicole mentioned, if you fill out your complete a passport and share it on our Instagram, your team can win $500, which is nothing to joke about. So I hope you all participate in that. Um, and if not, I will see you all on Friday afternoon at our reflective workshop. So thank you so much again to our panelists and to all of you. Have a really good day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.